Hello, hello. I've arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, interdimensional tactical specialist. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Hello, hello. So, Arknights, Rainbow Six Siege. I've learned a lot today, but we'll get back to, or we'll get, not back to that because I haven't gotten to it. We'll get into that once we get into the game. So, tonight marks the end of the Rainbow Six event, one way or the other. Tomorrow marks the start of the Rainbow Six event. So yes, one regret I had from this event is that I didn't get started on it right away. I think, I don't think we started streaming it until it's like roughly a week into it or something like that. Now I'm curious, I'm gonna double check that. So yes, the first part of Operation Loose and Arrowhead that we did anyway, was September 6th. Lucent Arrowhead. I don't think it, yeah, I don't think it was a full week between the start of the event and the start of me streaming it. Um, yeah, because I know it, okay, September 5th. Okay, so it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't as, I didn't dally as much as I had thought I had. But yeah, I did spend a good amount of time between part one and part two. Yeah, five days. So, I did lose almost a week over the course of that. So, anyway, as I was saying, one of my regrets was that I had started fairly late into this event. So, we didn't have as much time as I would like to be able to take to get through it. We have gotten through it, and we can easily do what remains, because all that remains is one cutscene. And even if it's a, an hour long, a cutscene is a cutscene, and I shouldn't be able to fail a cutscene, despite my best efforts. But yes, let's see. What else is there to say? Not a whole lot, I suppose. So yes. So, tonight, Arknights. Tomorrow, probably Arknights. <laughs> I was hoping for a little break after this event, but it seems that the grind never ends. I'll have time to take some, some rest. It's not as though I'm that busy each day. Though, of course, I do have a quite a backlog of VODs that need to be processed and put up currently. So, I suppose they don't take that much time anyway. Neither here nor there, though. But yes, yesterday, I said that this was probably going to be a short stream, and that we were probably just going to play we are probably just going to go through that one cutscene and maybe do one of the stages that we hadn't done yet and then or that we hadn't gotten a three star on yet and then just call it quits but we're changing things up a little bit first difference is that i suppose yeah video games we'll go over to the studio or not the studio we're in the studio video games anyway so, that's part of the login event. I got a 10 roll for the this banner, the event banner. I was meaning to use that off camera because I generally don't care to roll on camera, but I forgot. <laughs> and if I don't do it tonight, then I'm gonna lose it. So, because yes, this 10 roll is applicable only on this banner. So again, if I don't use it today, I will not get the chance to use it and it will be wasted. Yes, no six star it looks like, and no five star until the very end. But it is what it is. Anyway, while we're pardon, while we're going over this, I suppose I can talk a little bit about my plans. So, like I was saying, I rethought things a little bit, and I do believe what we're going to do is we're going to make some more attempts at. Here to join you simply because Operation I'm bored CR8, and want to do. the final gameplay mission of this event. Last time around, we got a passing Attention. but not exceptional result on it. We did defeat every enemy other than uh, Mateo. Now and of course, if chance. we hadn't defeated every enemy except Mateo, we would have training. lost. But we still didn't defeat <laughs> Mateo properly. <laughs> but yes. So. With that in mind, I did some research, 
and I don't usually do that either. Mostly just, you know, I'm not opposed to it, certainly. There's a lot of games in which I do research. But this is a game where I usually like to try and... Yeah, this is a game where I usually like to try and, uh... Try and solve problems on my own. But there's only so far that will really take me when I'm operating from a position of incomplete or erroneous knowledge which is what I'm getting at here. I'll talk a little bit more about it once we get over to the event, but... Suffice it to say that I had a somewhat inaccurate... Yeah, had a somewhat inaccurate view of certain things. Alright, here's a five-star. Very nice. I'll protect you. Good to see you again, Doc. So, yes. So, let's get back to the terminal. And let's get back to the game. So, yes. So, I've said it before, but on the enemy screen, they give you numbers. And these numbers don't tell you that much. So, you can see Mateo here has... An A in defense. Oh, oh my, my, uh, my model's frozen. That's unfortunate. Would you be so kind as to work? Uh oh. All right, one second. One second. Ba -ba -ba -bum. turned it off and turned it back on again and it's working now so anyway as I was saying so Mateo has A in defense and he has A in resistance but A isn't a number it can be I suppose it can be a variable but in this context A is not a number which causes some issues in estimating certain things because I can look at A Yes. Anyway. Um, where was I? Anyway. Yes. A is not a number. So, I can't look at A and say, if I do, you know, X amount of damage, well, introducing more letters into it is going to make it even more algebraic. But yeah, let's say I have an attack of, say, 300 and some, and I have a unit, or I have an enemy with, you know, 200 attack. The 300 damage, physical damage is dealt, the 200 attack is subtracted, and I do 100 damage per attack. Pretty straightforward, that's how uh, defense works. So, the letters represent more so a vibe than anything else. They represent that a unit has, you know, an A means that they have a whole whole lot of a given stat, an E means that they have not so much of a given stat very little of the given stat, and so on and so forth. But yes, you can look at some of these other enemies. They have Ds and Es and Cs and As and Bs and all that. Anyway, saying a whole lot of words here to basically mean, uh, basically to say, I can't look at A and know exactly what that means. So, I can't really problem solve if I don't have any idea of what the variable I'm working with is. So I decided to look up information about Mateo and the other units to sort of get a better idea of how I could theoretically counter them. And the thing that I learned is that Captain Mateo has 2,000 defense. Yes, yeah, not 1,000. He has 2,000. Actually, hold on. Let me double check my numbers here because I didn't actually write this down. I might be I might be telling tales out of school. Mateo, enemy. Yes. No, he does have 1,000 defense. Anyway. 
undercuts my point a little bit, but he has a lot of defense is the point. And so, for a quick comparison, we will pull up some of our units here. So, if we were to sort our units by their attack, yes. So, if we were to sort our units by their attack, you may notice that Ayla here has 500 attack, and 500 is less than 1,000. So, when you subtract 1,000 damage or 1,000 defense from 500 attack damage, the result is not a very large number. Fortunately, the game does have a failsafe, or not really a failsafe, it's just, you know, a matter of how the defense system works, in that defense cannot reduce the amount of damage an attack does to less than 5% of the amount of damage the attack would do by default. So yes, so Ayla would do 5% of her attack damage, which would be come out to around 25%, something like that, or 25 damage, not 25%, so yes. I guess the exact number isn't all that important, but you know. Um, yes, 25.25 damage. I don't know exactly how the rounding works in this game. So we can just say 25 for the sake of convenience. But yes, of all the units that I have, the only one who has more attack... Pardon. The only one who has more attack than Mateo has defense is Quartz. And even then... That only matters so much. Of course, she can get even more attack temporarily from her skills, but yeah, every, yeah, with a thousand defense, or even with, or with a thousand attack, and even with over a thousand attack, you still might not be getting beyond that, you know, 5% damage minimum. Yeah, it'd take a fair amount. I don't have the numbers in front of me, because again, I didn't crunch them ahead of time. All this is to say that basically all of our physical damage dealing units are dealing absolutely miserable amounts of damage. <laughs> because yeah, even even our strongest great sword wielding soldier here is dealing, let's see, 1,088, 5%, oops, is dealing about 50 damage. Which is not high, considering Matei Eo also has 40,000 HP. So, this is a bit of a problem. And I noticed earlier, I did notice that, you know, we had, I did use casters a little bit. I thought, you know, if our enemies have high defense, then it's good to do arch damage to them. And that is true. But, Again, I sort of failed to take into account the fullness of the situation. Because, you know, I see a number like one, like A, or I see A at, in defense, and I see A in resistance. And because those are the same letter, intuitively you kind of tend to think that they would have a similar amount of impact, you know? That a unit with an A defense and a unit with an A resistance when being attacked by, say, an average enemy, or an average player unit, would take probably a, you know, roughly the same amount of damage from an arch attack versus from a physical attack. But, Mateo has 50 resistance, and resistance, again, is a percentage-based damage reduction. So having X resistance means you take X less damage for X percent less damage from any given arts attack. So, for instance, if you have a unit with 300 attack that deals arts damage, and you have a enemy with 50 resistance, they do 150 arts damage. So, 50% is a lot higher than 5%. 50% is a lot higher than 5%. So, what this means is that the floor of damage that you can do against Mateo in particular, but enemies in general, I found that it's not very common for enemies to have over 50% or over 50 resistance. 
Again, given that the resistance number translates directly into a percentage, it wouldn't be unfair to say that they have 50% resistance, but I want to use the proper terminology. But yes, anyway, all of this is to say, once again, that I've been dramatically, dramatically undervaluing casters, and this is not news to anyone who's been watching me play. But yes, I've been dramatically underestimating the value of casters and dramatically overestimating the amount of damage that physical units deal to high defense enemies. Because Mateo, even though he is a boss, and you know, thus has just very high stats in general, it's not his numbers aren't that much higher than, say, a elite enemy in terms of defense. Because the, the heavy defender, you know, that unit that we've been seeing since chapter two, has 800 defense. And that, you know, it's not a boss, it's just a type of enemy that spawns relatively frequently. Sometimes, you know, several at a time. But yes, they have 800 defense, which is still enough to reduce most of my physical damage dealing units to the point where they're, you know, doing the bare minimum damage that they could do. Quartz is a notable exception to that, as we saw, she has, you know, enough attack that she can do roughly 20% of her physical damage. But yes, so, enemies that have really high defense can very easily push you into a point where your physical damage dealing units are dealing basically no damage double-digit damage, maybe even single-digit damage, whereas a high-resistance enemy, and there are enemies with resistance rankings higher than A, and there are enemies with A rankings in resistance that have higher than 50% resistance, but they are much fewer and farther between than enemies who have extremely high defense numbers. So, basically what I'm saying is I need to use more casters. And I do feel like it's a little bit of a shame, because I do, you know, we've got a lot of enemies here. We've got a lot of enemy, or a lot of enemies here? No, pardon. That's a very rude way for me to refer to my allies. But yes, we have a lot of units here who deal physical damage. You know, arts damage is usually associated with people who are able to use arts. You know, understandably. And since none of them come from Terra, None of the Rainbow Six operators are able to use uh, able to use arts, so I don't think any of them are able to to deal arts damage. At least not that I've noticed. Yeah, even Tachanka, who I specifically chose, not just because he's Tachanka, but because he has an ability that reduces defense, reduces a hundred reduces defense by one hundred when attacking enemies in the burning area, which is good but it's only good against units that have enough defense or little enough defense that losing 100 defense would like matter. Because even if Mateo had 900 defense, he still has way more defense than Tachanka has attack. Against, say, the Coalition Army Hounds and the Rapid Light Crossbow or, and, or yeah, Crossbow guys, that's a reasonable reduction in damage, enough to increase his DPS notably, but against the real heavy hitters in this operation, it is not, not much. So, Astesia, we've seen, does very well in countering some of these higher defense enemies. But yeah, let's see, the Armored Scouts that I specifically chose her to counter, for instance, have 1,200 defense an A-plus ranking, and they have zero resistance. So, Astesia can basically just obliterate them, whereas other units that I have would be almost incapable of dealing any appreciable amount of damage to them. But yes, well, you know, again, except for casters, but... That's it. So, again, this leaves us in a situation, full stop, but anyway, this leaves us in a situation where I have been forced to confront the fact that I'm really, really not, uh, don't have a lot of units that are well, well set up to deal with a lot of different situations. 
Because again, I've very, very highly valued physical damage. Or rather, it'd be more accurate to say that I have simply not valued arch damage. And, you know, for the most part, that has worked. A lot of the enemies that you face have very little arch resistance and very little defense, such that, you know, a caster and a sniper, the two sort of pretty comparable classes. Yeah, usually, you know, a core, a core sniper or a core caster and a marksman sniper will do similar amounts of damage to the enemy or similar DPS to the enemy. And often the uh, marksman sniper will have a lower time to kill simply due to the fact that they tend to attack faster and combined with the fact that snipers are generally, you know, generally have a lower DP cost and are easier to field, that means that they are usually a more, a more, uh, more economical choice for situations that don't have sort of this very specific need for very specific units. So, I've not valued casters very much. I've not valued arts guards very much. I've not valued arts damage dealing units beyond casters very much at all, with the exception of Aesthesia, who we, who we, who we have used quite a bit. But the reason that I use Aesthesia is predominantly for her aesthetics. But yeah, I just sort of like the, the way that she looks and the way that her animations are and the fact that she uses the rapier, which is kind of cool. I like those those types of weapons. But yeah, the, the globe in her hand also reminds me a little bit of Final Fantasy XIV Red Mages, and I like Red Mages. Anyway, so. I've used Aesthesia tactically. I've used Aesthesia tactically in this very mission. But... I've never really appreciated the sheer amount of value that she is able to produce with her arch damage. What exactly it means for her to be able to do arch damage just passively. And that's a real shame. So, anyway, given that I now understand the amount of damage that we are missing out on, I'm over here, Doctor. I want to emphasize her damage a little bit more. Beeswax, on the other hand, I think might not be our number one with this new, new, more caster focused strategy. And again, casters might not be the solution, but they're a solution that I want to try. So, as for casters, I think I want to use a splash caster again. We used lava last time. I wasn't thrilled with the results that I got. I didn't get, like, much in the way of results, to be honest. So, I'm kind of weighing my options. I don't know precisely what I, who I want to use. The first thought in my mind is to go from using lava to using lava. Lava 2, the cooler lava. I guess... Better lava would be hotter lava, especially in this case. I've got a good idea of the enemy's weaknesses. But yes, Let's lava, go. the purgatory. But yes, lava, the purgatory, is another another unit. You know, he's lava. She's another splash caster. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to to try her a little bit. I think I've spoken of this a little bit before. But part of my hesitation with promoting units a lot, with leveling them up too much, well, I guess more promoting more than anything, and with swapping out units for sort of higher rarity units, is because to my mind, I feel like that's kind of, on the one hand, it's kind of cheap, kind of cheapens the challenge. But on the other hand, I feel like it kind of plays up the idea of, you know, plays up the usual sort of perspective of gacha games as being, a, you know, something where you need to spend money in order to have a fighting chance. And I don't think that's true of this game at the very least. I can't speak to many gacha games, I don't play them, other than this one. But I don't think that this is a game where you really need to do that sort of thing. And I don't want to, you know, 
I don't want to imply that it is. But yes, Lava the Purgatory, however, is something of a exception in my mind to my usual reluctance to switch to higher rarity units or anything other than aesthetic reasons. Because I was using, you know, the five and six star Rainbow Six operators, but I was using them on the grounds that they are relevant to the mission, you know. I'm using them because they fit the theme. But yes. So lava. Anyway, I'm saying a lot of a lot of words and not producing a lot of meaning here. Basically, Lava is a unit that you can get for free. Lava the Purgatory is a unit you can get for free. So I don't feel, you know, I don't feel too bad about using her. At the very least, you know, for beyond that, three star units tend to not be very good in general. Four star units are generally more applicable. But I'm not familiar with splash casters, so I don't really I mean, again, I'm not familiar with casters in general. So, anyway. Lava the Purgatory. I'm using her because uh, she's the only other splash caster that I'm particularly familiar with, and because uh, we can get the ability to attack a few, like, multiple units. But yes. So, that should be enough explanation here. New skill, new cost, new talent. Let's go. There are lots of talented casters out there, but I'm not so lucky. That's why I have to get stronger if I want to be able to save the world. Thanks for helping me out, Doctor. No problem. So, we got a new skill. Increases range, increases attack, and attacks multiple targets. Stops attacking and targets the ally with the highest HP within range, enveloping them and herself within a ring of fire. Each ring of fire deals 30% attack act as arch damage each second to every to all enemies in the surrounding eight tiles. I don't think that this skill is necessarily what I'm going to want for right now. It could be useful, especially considering that we've been our main strategy for dealing with uh Arch the Alley with the highest HP, yeah, that would we could very easily set this up such that the ally with the highest HP is the one who's currently blocking Mateo. But yes. Anyway, we'll increase her skills as well. But yes, 10% attack up is not a tremendous bonus, but it's a bonus nonetheless. Um, and spell formation. Immediately obtains 50, 20, yeah. 25 skill points after the first deployment. On each deployment, grants SP plus 3 to other caster allies on the field. When deployed, other caster allies are gain initial SP plus 3. Yeah, that, yeah, that is not 25, it's 20, and it's saying that the plus 5 is from probably potential, I think. Anyway. Yes. I suppose, yeah, earlier I said that I was okay with Lava the Purgatory on the grounds that she is a unit you can get for free. More specifically, she is a unit you can only get for free. She is a unit that you cannot spend any amount of money on to get and we're going to level her up some more so she's a bit more on par. Got it all down. Okay. So, Lava the Purgatory. I've got a good idea of the enemy's weaknesses. Let's go. So, given the... What we have seen, I think we're also going to swap out Blitz. But yes, because we have... Ready to Durnar. Where am I yes. needed? Durnar, specifically, is an Arts Defender. So, or an Arch Protector, rather. So, she is able to deal Arch damage while her skill is active. But yeah, units like Durnar are probably why I had a somewhat inaccurate view of Arch Guards previously in my career with this game. I'd assume that they only did Arch damage while their skills were active as well. But, uh, no, they do Arch damage at all times. But yes, so I think Durnar is going to be a pretty good choice. She doesn't have... Well, I guess she's also substantially lower level, so I'm not really giving her as fair of a shake. Yeah, even with... Even with her increased level, that's 450... 458 versus... 538. 
So she is definitely less of a defensive choice. And, hmm, honestly, on that grounds, it might be, that might be grounds enough to keep bed, Blitz around. Just a suggestion. Hmm, yeah. I think, honestly, yeah, we need her, I was thinking of her as a way to, like, deal with multiple arch damage, or arch damage vulnerable enemies at once. But I don't think that's really... I don't think that's really what we want, per se. We definitely want, you know, someone who can take a lot of hits. Yeah, Gummy is here for a similar ch for a similar reason, but she also has the benefit of being able to heal and to be able to... Uh... Yeah, Gummy has the benefit of being able to heal and also to... Uh... to heal and to stun, so she can decrease the you know, the trouble she experiences that way. I think I'm going to switch to her other skill. And I think that's enough for us to get started. Well, okay, no. I think I'm going to switch out to Chanka for someone. Another caster, I think. Though, who exactly is unclear? We don't have a lot of other casters, to be honest. Um... Eastwax could be something. Kaobe. I don't know. Again, Kaobe is a unit that, you know, does run afoul of my sort of don't switch out for just a higher rarity unit. So again, I'm not really switching out to her for her rarity. I'm switching out for the fact that she is especially effective against enemies with high defense beyond just not caring about defense, which is a trait that I'm sure other casters have. Hmm. I suppose we could also use Amiya. We'll give her a shot. Got it. But yes. So of the operators that we still have, the of the rainbow operators we still have, I don't know that I don't know that Fuse provides us with a whole lot of value either. But yeah, Ayla. Ayla is here because I oh my why does my camera keep going funky? Hmm. Alright, one second. Let's not pull away for a second. Let's just make me invisible for the moment. Maybe. If I can remember where I put myself. Alright, I can't I can't turn invisible actually. Oh no, yes I can. Alright. I have relearned the invisibility spell. And let's see if I can unfreeze myself in time. Not sure what's up with that. I've not seen that before. But anyway, so it's fixed. Okay. Anyway. So Fuse doesn't provide us a whole lot of value. Ayla provides value through stuns. Yeah, I haven't been using her very much. So we could still swap her out for the potential of another more useful unit. Iana also provides utility. Utility that I've also been kind of sleeping on in the form of her ability to expose enemies who are invisible. Because Mateo is able to make enemies invisible Friendly during his reminder, second form. Stop and so, I think we're going to switch out Fuse or Kirin R. Yato. Leave it to me, Doctor. I'm doing this mostly just because I want to have a sort of emergency destroy something button. Because Kirin R. Yato can do a lot of damage. But yes. It's... She's a unit that... Well, okay. Basically, at this point, I mostly just want to see if I... With the knowledge that I have and the units that I have... And I take on, you know, this challenge and see it through to a clean completion. Yeah, rather than just getting a two-star ranking. And I definitely think it's possible. Well, I'll be sure to bring you some good news. But yes. Good scenery, so, doctor. What kind of battle will it things to be? think about. I wonder... We have three cover devices. 
we're probably going to need to use one here to just protect our units through this lane. Given that we've now learned that, given that we, what we have learned, that enemy, or Mateo specifically, has an ability that causes a persistent, um, a persistent uncurable until retreated uh, defense drop, 100 defense per, per diva. And it stacks and all that. Given that we know that, we don't want Mateo shooting anyone if we can avoid it. But yes, once he has shot someone, that's a problem for us. But yes, and that's probably why in the past we've seen a lot of sort of inconsistent results about our attempts to block Mateo. Because if he gets his shots off, then the unit who, you know, was blocking him not only now has a lot less health, they also just can't defend properly. So, we need to be able to defend. The other factor is the Mind Deployer. We've got two of those, and I'm not sure where to put them. At first I thought about putting them down here, during on this bottom lane. I had thought that the ex Originium Explosives would be sort of a way to destroy Mateo or his goons. And perhaps they could be used for that, but I don't think we'd really have the goons in a position where that would be, like, useful to us, unless something had gone wrong. Yeah, let me, let me look up the, the stats of the bodyguards, actually. Yes, Mateo's bodyguards. Yeah, they have enough attack and, or yeah, enough defense and enough HP that the, the Originium Explosives wouldn't, like, deal massive amounts of damage to them. That's it. Yeah, one way or the other, though, the Mine Deployer, I think, is a really important part of our strategy because it has, even though it attacks very infrequently, it has an attack of 2,000, which is enough to do an appreciable amount of damage to Mateo. The most, in an ideal world, we'd be able to place a Mind Deployer sort of on this left lane where Mateo patrols and, you know, stun him at various points during his travels. But we don't live in an ideal world, so we're just going to have to live with what we've got. And what we've got is the ability to place a Mind Layer here or perhaps here. It's not great, I don't think. There are definitely better things or better ways that we could do it, but I'm not too mad at it. So, as for units, we've been using Gummy. I think Gummy is fine, but I do think it could also be useful to have another, maybe start out with a guard over here, because a lot of these enemies are ones that can be readily dealt with by an ally who has, uh, yeah, that can be effectively dealt with by an ally who has, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? An ally who has, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, physical damage, physical damage. So, we want Estesia to be healed. And I think we want to also deploy Steward, thusly. Got it. And I think we're going to, or no, not the temporary cover. But yes, the mine layer is what I meant to deploy. Don't want to use that just yet. Yes, with the defense rune, Astesia doesn't take a whole lot of damage, and we could probably have held off on our... Oh dear. Well, we couldn't have held off on... Steward, oh dear. Hmm. So, things have gone a little bit poorly. I guess, yeah, part of the issue is that I got a little bit overzealous, and the lack of... Is it my turn to lend me 
yeah, the, act, uh, the lack of good coverage there meant that the uh, crossbowmen were shooting at, yeah, shooting at uh, Stewart, which is bad. So anyway, all of my thoughts about the mine layers are to say that I think I should put one here. But yes, I want to put a temporary cover here. Another unit of ours up here could also be good. Um, actually, yeah, Yana could be a good choice. Oh dear. How did... How did he get past the cover device? That's strange. Oh dear. Okay. Alright, our strategy's falling apart a little bit. Okay, some things happened that I wasn't uh, planning on, and now we're kind of in a bad way. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's retreat. Let's not play this out too long. Let's try to do this properly. I'm not going to stay at this for too long. We're just going to keep doing this until we can... For a little bit until we can get this right, if we can. But yes, so... Once again, we did suffer a lot from not deploying... Yeah, I don't know. Well, okay. I was... Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything about uh, not deploying... Okay. Yes. Not deploying, say, Blitz or someone else up here earlier. I do think... Yeah. The more I think about it, the more I do think that having a guard could be useful. At the very least, someone up here, perhaps, to deal some more damage. But... More specifically, a guard, because I do think it would be useful to have more, like, someone to draw shots from the, uh, the guys, you know, you know, the guys. But yes. Um, hmm. So yeah, to that end, it might be better to place Iana, like, year or so. But we, we're not going to do that until we after we've placed Perfumer and Steward and all them. Yeah, Steward is going to heavily focus on... Yeah, heavily focus on the... Uh, we don't need... Yeah, we don't need this easiest skill just yet. Um, Steward is going to die. Okay, so that was unfortunate and poorly planned. So yeah, so that is a problem. We do need someone there sooner. And to be fair, I could have placed Yato to sort of distract. And the fact that I didn't really is, a. Uh, a big part of what went wrong there, I think. So yeah, I think we want Iana sooner rather than later. As soon as we can justify, basically. Um... Right. I did... That time I just straight up forgot the cover device in general. So... Nothing I can really say about that. Um... Let's deploy Blitz, let's not fool around too much. Hmm. So the cover device... Hmm. Oh, okay. So yeah, um... I'm thinking that... Yeah, okay. Well, I was going to say I'm thinking that, but I... Yeah, the thing I was going to say that I'm thinking is that I'm thinking that it does what it says it does, basically. Uh, which is to say that I'm... When it says that it blocks shots from enemies around it, it seems like that's actually the case, because Gummy there did get shot. She got shot even though she was nominally within range of the cover device. Oh, but that time... 
That time she... That time the shot that the crossbowman shot did get blocked. So that is odd. Hmm. Now I'm curious. Um, we don't need to use that just yet. So, how is this going to go? It's going. I wouldn't say that it's going well, or that it's going poorly, but it is going. One way or the other, it is going. And Gummy is... Okay, Gummy is at a point where she can't take any any less defense. That's good. So, we don't have any more cover, but we shouldn't need it in theory. We shouldn't need it too desperately anyway. Hmm. Okay, I was hoping to stun. Okay. Okay, okay. We're not doing too bad. We're not doing too bad. Hmm, Gaviel, Gaviel, Gaviel. I don't know what I was thinking about not using Gaviel. Okay. Okay. So Gummy going down there was pretty bad. I'm surprised she did, considering everything. I guess maybe before she had, uh... No, please. Yes, before perhaps she had, uh... I don't know, what would have caused the difference there? Hmm. Okay, one way or the other. I think I want to retreat Gaviel, because ideally, I would like to be able to have two medics on Astesia. I suppose we can sort of have a kind of a bootleg medic in the form of Myrtle. Great value medic. Medic at home. Um, yes. Because now I've kind of... I have not thought this through super well. No time to hesitate. That is fair. Okay, Astesia's defense is going to keep going down, but I don't think it can go down that much. Because Gummy did have a pretty, like, set amount of defense there towards the end. Okay, well, that's a thousand damage. Um, yeah, we weren't coming back from that. So, Myrtle's going to be here, and she's going to provide us some emotional support, and boy do we need it. She's not going to sort of provide any sort of tactical support, per se. Um, should have been using this on Ami a little bit earlier. Once we can stun again, we should stun him before he gets out of, well, I was going to say before he gets out of Ami's attack range. Okay, that time he did definitely get stunned. Okay, so. So yes. So Blade Dance is done, I think. And yeah, we're at a point where Mateo can't reasonably kill Blitz. Whoops. I don't want to put her up there. That's a poor place to put her. Yes, we've been in this situation before. So we shouldn't need to worry too much. I'm deploying uh, Ayla basically just for the sake of it. Um, hmm. How do we want to do the rest of this? Because one of Mateo's squad is going to show up here. And being able to block or being able to deal with them could be useful. Though, whom we are going to deal with them with is a little bit up in the air. I want to say Astesia, but I don't know that she's going to have the survivability we need. Yummy here 
should help her a little bit. Don't get yourself killed, dummy. But there's only so much that we can really do. Yeah, I don't think putting the mine, the mine device on the left-hand side really did much for us. Like it reduced his damage or reduced his health a little bit before he got to us, but I don't think it really. I think it probably made things worse, honestly, by giving him more time to like attack. Because yeah, he does have like an attack interval, and I think whether or not he gets stunned, you know, the attack interval is still there. Okay, Yana. Go for me. Come on, get it together. Um, okay, okay. How do we want to do this now? Let's get this started. I think do I do think, think sometimes, you if you can believe it. Um Yeah, Yana's skill is active. Asesia's skill is active. Um Oh dear. We did have a beast get by us. Um, and we're going to have another one if I don't do something about it. Oh, they're invisible. Okay. Right. So. Hmm. Hmm. So. Ayla is gone. That's not the worst thing in the world. Let's do some stunning, please. Thank you. Gummy is not in a position to do anything. So yeah, so the enemies are going to converge on Mateo. Which is bad. Um, yeah, especially because our entire defensive force just got obliterated. So. Tip. So. The bodyguards coming from the right. They're a problem, but they're not a unsolvable problem, I don't think. Hmm. I believe that they they should have significantly Your less attack than Mateo. Hmm. So that is to say that I think we can block them more or less indefinitely. Hmm. So, how can we improve this? I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, we could put, say, Perfumer there and have her... Well, actually, hold on. How much frontal range does she have? Now that I think about it. Um, two frontal range, so that won't be enough to cover the bottom there. Hmm. Oh no, it would be if I angled her down. So, frontal range there. The problem then is how do we support Astesia? And the, the answer is probably with Gabiel. That does put our two medics in prime exploding range, which is less than ideal. But it does put us in a situation where we can have Gummy being healed which is more than ideal. Hmm. So Iana's... I don't know if Iana's skill went off there. I think it might have... I don't... Yeah, because I think it has to be manually activated. And I think it, like, resets if, if she, uh, you know, is forced to switch. So that was definitely not the best. Um, beyond that... Yeah, I think that the where I put the the device earlier was a bit of a mistake. Um, where could we put one better? I guess we could also put one up here, maybe, to cover both of these lanes. But I don't know that that's really going to help us much either. Hmm. Yeah, otherwise, I think our strategy was pretty sound. Again, placing even just like a temporary unit, like, whoops, yeah, placing a temporary unit like 
earabouts at some point to keep enemies from shooting down Stewart and all that would be nice. So yeah, given that our cheapest unit that fits the bill would be uh, Yato, you might use just Yato for that purpose. Good scenery here, Doctor. How to get detected. But yes, the early gummy I think is still fine. This might be a situation again, like I was saying, where Hughes or someone else wouldn't even need to be a Centurion Guard, I suppose. But a guard of some description could be good to start us off with here. But yes. So, Myrtle. Anesthesia. Anesthesia really doesn't need that much healing. Honestly, she might even be able to make it with just the passive healing from Perfumer skill. That's comforting to think about. Um, I won't be afraid. But yes, Steward. Um, I think we Steward would be a little bit better, a little bit more forward. Yes, Iana. Placing Iana a little bit earlier would be nice. If nothing else, Iana is like damage, and damage is good. Um, and if we place Iana like here, then we can place. Well, no, again, I want to place the casters first. Um, right. Okay. So we did lose out on some theoretical DPS, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not that bothered. Um, Yana. I think, yeah, we want Yana sooner rather than later, even with things as they are, because we don't want a lot of people shooting Perfumer, because Perfumer is very important to us. Practically and emotionally. Um, so. That's fine with me. I guess maybe, depending on the exact timing, the cover device could possibly just, like, not always be the perfect choice. But that time it did work. It did work un unfailingly, unquestioningly. So, uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. Nice! Okay, so that, yeah. Still is active, and now she's using it. Alright, Myrtle went down. Hmm. No time to have your tricks won't work here. Not the worst thing in the world. It might even be better, honestly, just the fact that we can uh That's fine with me. Let's pray to mm. buy your mind. Oh, Freeze. hold on. Ready to heal. Gaviel. I can place her like that, actually. This is probably isn't a good choice, but She's not gonna. Well, no, she is gonna get shot actually a lot. Um, Come on, get it together. More style in my get side. it together, indeed. Um, but it's not too terrible. This, mm. about your end. this is all very interesting. Honestly, we could probably switch out Astesia for Blitz and have a pretty easy time of it. Um. Ah, we've just lost the... well, Gummy's strong enough. He's tough. Down you go. In. Style in my okay, anyway. Gabriel's tough enough to withstand being shot Down a lot. <laughs> Astesia's uh, pretty tough. But yeah, um... Everyone's tough. Yeah, we're doing we're doing pretty good. On, Ideally, together. I would like I would like to make sure that yeah, it would be best if Yana didn't explode. Um, so let's make sure that these enemies that this fellow goes down like fast and consistently. Um, Ready when you are. Stay close. All right. Done, and he's gonna go down, and that's going to be very good for us. Ooh boy. 
Yeah, there's a part of me that wants Mateo to, like, not go down, or, yeah, that wants Mateo to be in the range of the beam so that he can be exploded, but that is basically just not really a concern, per se. Like, that's fine if he just, like, doesn't, like, as long as we can take him out. So, the question now... He's definitely going to shoot Astesia. He's also going to shoot Gaviel. I hadn't really thought about that. Him shooting Gaviel might have been kind of good, though. As much as we don't like Gaviel getting shot, it does mean that... Well, actually, no. Um, because Astesia is now in a position where she can't be directly healed. Mateo's in a position where he's just kind of standing there which is a little bit worrying. Freeze. Okay, yeah, we... If we had healing on Astesia, we may have been able to manage that, but we didn't, so we don't. Or we can't. Um, yeah, we can't reasonably expect... Uh, can't reasonably expect someone to be able to stand up to Mateo um, without healing. So yeah, one way or the other. Hmm. Ready when you are. Freeze. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, we lost some good units to discover that information, unfortunately. Um, and now he's going to shoot Iana a lot. Not the worst thing in the world, but it's not the best thing in the world, certainly. Um. All right. Perfumer's gonna go down, so we might as well retreat her. Yeah, Omnia could be good to sort of help this situation stay under control. Dummy is not able to stand up to him on her own. Um, what's going to happen next? I'm going to deploy Astesia, and I'm going to deploy Gaviel, and Gaviel is Maybe not going to be able to hold her up on her own. Um, Gaviel has gone down at a very inopportune time. I should not have deployed her. I should have just used Yato. Um, no time to hesitate. No time to hesitate. Right. Um, so. Mateo's trying to break his way into there, which is bad. But yes, I want to blitz block over here. There's not much healing going on in this part of the world, which worries me a lot. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay. Mateo's goon uh, was able to take us out pretty... So this is yeah, take out our units pretty... Oh dear. Yeah, he just takes nothing from that... Uh, from that Originium Explosive. Okay. So. It might actually be to my benefit to do the thing that I immediately dismissed upon thinking of it and placing a mine layer, like, facing that way. Of course, part of the issue is just that I have not been very up on using uh, other devices. So a lot of units got shot when they really didn't need together, to. Everyone. Yeah, Estesia, I don't think, would have been able to... Yeah, I don't know if she can really be expected to tank through Mateo's attacks. Yeah, even with 600 HP... Um, or 600 defense, effectively, from the defense runes. Um, yeah, his attacks, his melee attacks do... What was it? What is his attack? Um, or, uh, it's, yeah, 2.5 2.5 damage, or 2.5 times damage. Um, and his attack is 550, which is fairly low, to be honest, but... He attacks a lot, and he does more damage on his melee attacks, so... 
So 550 times 2.5 is, yeah, 13,000 or 1,375. So yes, he has a, what's his attack interval? Three seconds. Does Gaviel heal that much in three seconds though, is the question. So yes, Gaviel is already on the team, so she won't show up in the selection. Gaviel. So Gaviel is a medic. She is a normal medic. Um, probably a lot of her patients would disagree with her being normal, but anyway. Um, she heals every 2.85 seconds and she heals about 300 HP, so no. Her alone is not going to be able to cut it, I don't think. Actually, wait, hold on. Right, I forgot to take into account the defense. So roughly 600 defense is still about 700 damage over the core, or, yeah, every three seconds. Um, so yeah, Gaviel is, I don't think, going to be able to heal Asthesia specifically enough to keep her up and alive during all of that. So we will need to switch out Asthesia for someone else at some point. Um, Yato is doing fine. I haven't been using her really very well. That's on me. Um, Amiya's okay. I didn't do much with her there. But yeah, I let Myrtle die when I really didn't need to, and I let Gummy take a lot of defense reduction that I didn't need to. Um, yeah, I'm still not sure why the cover devices aren't working sometimes. I'm guessing that it's not that they're not, like, functioning, and more so it's an issue of, uh, them having a brief cooldown at the end of their, like, protection period. Because, yeah, like, the skill activates when they... the skill activates when they are shot, and then they produce a protective area for a certain period of time. Hmm. Yeah. Again, I'm not 100% sure what to make of it. I'm fine with Myrtle getting shot a little bit. The issue is if Gummy gets shot, to be honest. Um, hmm. Well, no. I was going to say maybe we could put Gaviel there. But no. If we're going to have... Uh, try to place Perfumer there we can protect this lower lane, then yeah, we're not going to be able to cover Asthesia with Gummy through a Perfumer as well. Um... Hmm. So yes. So... Perfumer is fine. Um... I guess we don't necessarily need to place, uh lava early or anything just as long as she gets fielded at some point basically um all right and she hmm, no she can't cover on her own um so i think well i guess it depends on where we place well no yeah placing her in the back is better i think understood because this left side is where we're going to see a lot of enemies Especially once I put Yana there. Um, but yes. So, we're very soon going to see a situation. And I don't like that. Um, okay. Cover. Nope. 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 There we go. So that worked, definitely. Um... Gummy is now consistently in... What just happened? Oh, Steward went down again. Right. The same thing that usually happens. So. Again? The cover did not work. I'm sure it worked. You know, I'm sure it did what it was supposed to do. But it didn't do what I wanted it to do. So. Hmm. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I want to block enemies, you know, in a place where they're going to be easy prey for... Hmm. Yeah, easy prey for lava. If you want treatment, you gotta come close. Lend me your wings. Avians among the stars. Hmm. <laughs> okay, there it goes. And now it's not doing anything anymore. Um. Don't get yourself killed, dummy. Complicated situation. Uh, um. That's fine with come on. Chin up. Gathering in. Stay close. Please do gather intel. Uh, we need as much on, as much information as we can get. The gummy is surviving just fine. This guy is going to be a bit of a problem if we let him be. We don't necessarily need to let him be, though. No time to tear them apart. No time to tear them apart. Then get to it. We can't afford to waste any time, certainly. Um, there's a part of me that doesn't want Dummy to, hold on, is, no, Blitz is outside of Gabriel's healing range. Okay, so that's very bad. In that case, probably we can't afford to let Gummy take too much more damage, or rather take too many more defense reductions. If anybody needs to surprise, stay close. Hmm. So, Blitz is in a situation, and I don't like that, as we've established. Um, is it my turn to lend me your wings? Avians among the stars. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything we can really do to make sure Astesia will survive all of this. Let's begin. But we can retreat Gabriel. Why did we have Gabiel there in the first place? I guess because these guys... Yeah, these guys do a lot of damage, actually. Um... Goodbye, Astesia. Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> well... Hmm. Is this going to protect Gun? Yes, it is. All right, now the moment of truth. Or maybe not. Okay. If we can get our medics back online, we can probably salvage this. One thing I've learned is that you can't stun Mateo while he's doing that. I did learn that on my own, but I confirmed it through, yeah, the wiki. Um. You think I have surprise? We do have surprise. Um. Who needs healing? Come over. Please heal. Uh, I don't know that this is gonna be enough to do it. Come on, get it together. Yeah. Um. It was not. Maybe could have if things shook out a little bit differently. Astesia definitely doesn't so have the defense to make this happen on her own. Um. I don't know what I was thinking there, really, but Come on, get it together. perhaps I wasn't. Um, if we can stall some more, then at least we can on, prevent Mateo from uh, causing too much of a problem for us. We're not doing too bad, honestly. Let's get this started. Come on, get it together. Yes. Ready when you stay Ooh, close. DPS doesn't really matter right now. We just need to do whatever it takes to keep Astesia alive. But it looks like we don't hey, need to do I'm that coming. much. Because Mateo is getting stunned frequently enough that he can't completely kill her. It's scary. Is it this is deeply upsetting what I'm watching here, but Estesia is winning. And she's winning relatively fast, too. I should have retreated Gummy a while ago. 
but I was worried that I would need her to defend. But I can place Blitz. I don't like to have Blitz here because I would have preferred to have Blitz somewhere elsewhere. Um, but more specifically, I would have preferred to have Blitz somewhere where more enemies are going to be, but we don't have the luxury because Gummy is, you know. Um, yeah, Gummy is out of commission. Yeah, Ayla being taken out of commission is also very bad. Um, okay, okay. Astesia is in a situation, and it's not a good one, but I do think that things are kind of manageable currently. Well, who did we just lose? Oh, we just lost uh, someone who I expected to lose, and I'm not too concerned about losing. Um, she has a name, Yako. Um, but... We are doing okay. And I don't think... Yeah, because, yeah, he's... One thing I also know is that now he is a melee enemy shortly. So he cannot possibly, under any circumstance, uh, cannot possibly shoot uh, our medics anymore. So that's good. Of course, that doesn't mean our medics can't get shot by other people. But Mateo can't do it anymore. If anyone needs to sneeze. Ooh. If you want treatment, you gotta come closer. Okay, Stay for humor. Is it my turn, Doctor? Um, Astesia is now in a situation where she cannot doctor? contribute. So, we need to switch things around a little bit. Got it. But, I think we won. Come on, get it together. Because I do think we've stopped these bolts from getting to Mateo. And that's really the sort of make or break moment of this. Because as long as we can prevent Mateo from having his stun ability, and as long as we can do damage to him faster than, or not faster than he can do to us, but as long as we can, you know, prevent him from stunning our units, we can prevent him from moving forward, and we can prevent his you know, units from damaging us and all of that, and it's just, it's just good, it's just good. So. We can probably do something here, but I don't know what that something would be, and I don't, I really don't want to risk blowing up the Originium Bombs, because that's going to destroy everything. Gathering intel. Hostile in my sights! Um, I don't really care about stunning Mateo, to be honest. Um, these guys up top could still be an issue, potentially, for, um, Yato. But Yato is doing pretty good. You know what? Perfumer told me to stay calm, so I guess we'll stay calm. I trust the first well. Yeah, the situation hasn't, like, changed in, you know, several seconds, so it's probably not going to change. Okay. Alright, I think we got it, baby. Oh yeah, Mateo, Mateo is gone. Alright. We have one. Because, yeah, there's no way that this guy can get through Blitz. And even if he could, he can't get through Gummy. Actually, he's not going to try to get through Gummy, now that I think about it. Um, scenery here, Doctor. I'm a little bit worried, so I do want to uh, get a little bit of potential for healing on him. Let's what retreat Gummy, um, in case we need to move her, you know, just in case. On the off chance. Ready when you are. Yana can be retreated. Yato can also be retreated. I don't know how much most of these are going to benefit us, but they can they certainly can happen. Do you think I have time to power? You yes. do have time to power. But yes. The situation was holding even in much more dire times, so I guess I 
probably don't have any reason to worry that um, Blitz might not be able to endure this. But even so, this assuages my nerves so somewhat, so I'm going to keep doing it. I placed it, I placed Lava in a place where she can't contribute, because I forgot again about her range. And with this, I am 100% certain that we have won. Oh boy. So, it's not done yet, but I do want to give my thoughts on the event somewhat. I've enjoyed this a lot. I've had a lot of fun with the story. I've had a lot of fun with the challenge. I'm glad that we got into it a Come little on, bit sooner and were a little bit more consistent on it than we, we were with the Arc Knights or Monster Hunter collab. One of these days, I do still want to dig up the footage from my mm -hmm. successful year of Rathalos. Whoops, you're not uh, Yana. But yes, one of these days I do want to dig up the footage from my successful tier of Rathalos and play it. Because I did beat Rathalos, and I'm very proud of that. Um, but yeah, overall, I enjoyed the event quite a bit. I enjoyed some of the... Yeah. I'm, I'm just... Okay, now I'm just happy. I'm here after all. And what a more fitting win quote. What more fitting of a win quote could we possibly have than this line from the man who held the line? But yes, Blitz, you did... It was fine because you were there. 100%. 100%. Whew. And that was something. Yes, the stages have been fun. I've enjoyed the the uh, challenges. I've enjoyed the mechanics. I do like the the devices that are part of this event. But yes, rip to uh, rip to a commanding officer. We hardly knew ye. But yes. I think, I think Raynell was a very interesting character. I think Patea was a little bit flat. But yeah, I feel like he had some interesting interactions, but I feel like we didn't get a lot of insight into him other than the fact that he's kind of a jerk. But yes, overall, I like this event a lot. Had a lot of fun. I've enjoyed the, the new units. I still haven't found a great use case for Doc. But he's fine. Yeah, there's probably, honestly, a situation like we were in probably could have been a pretty decent use case for him. Get the uh, the boost from the stem, a little bit more damage. Of course, you know, the very high defensive enemies that we were facing meant that we really couldn't contribute. Yeah, a lot of the rainbow operators just couldn't contribute very well. Blitz, the role that we put Blitz into, and I guess, you know, they sh it's best that they don't, you know, design the event assuming that you need specific or, you know, around using specific um, units that you can get from the gacha. Like, that is reasonable, that makes sense, that is respectful of the players and all that. I wonder if I could have... Now that I think about it, I could have placed Fuse there and had done... had a funny Fuse moment. Anyway... <laughs> But yes, it's respectful of the players to not require them or not expect them to have, you know, units that they could very well just not have. But I can see why they didn't go very heavily into designing the stages around the rainbow operators. I do think it'd be kind of cool, though. Again, you know, we don't need to, like, design around them specifically, but if they had a way to contribute especially well, that could be good. Um, Yana, I think, contributed, contributed well with her ability to pierce invisibility, which is, again, not something that is unique to her. Other units can do that as well. So it's a way to sort of incentivize you to use the relevant units without requiring it. That's sort of more what I'm getting at, the sort of thing that I think is valuable. But yes. So, yeah, Ayla there, 
was good because she could stun. Probably she could have been good also just in being able to reduce the amount of average damage that was coming at us by reducing enemy accuracy. Again, I think that's what optical interference does. I still don't know precisely because the language it uses is just not language that is used anywhere else in the game to my knowledge. Hit rate is not something that is ever referenced anywhere else, so I'm still not 100% sure what that means. I suppose I can just look it up. Um, yes, optical interference. Hit rate. Okay, so yes, so I've confirmed. I've looked on the wiki. Hit rate is in fact a is accuracy, and I've also confirmed that. Uh, yeah, it's also a thing that is new to Ayla. It is a new mechanic to Ayla. But yes, so no wonder I was confused about it. Literally no one else can interact with, with hit rate. But yes, so... Where was I? Right, okay. So Ayla could have been useful with her hit rate reduction. But yes, but the stuns were also valuable when we used her. Um... But yes. Other other things to say. Blitz was useful, but we only really used him for the fact that he had very high defense. You know, he also has very he also has the ability to stun. Um, I think we're probably pretty safe on defenders, but let me just be safe. Okay. I guess we don't have a lot of other We don't have a lot of other defenders who are at even a remotely comparable level, but uh, Beagle here. Yeah, Beagle here, if she was Oh, I guess we can sort of not level them up. Yeah, Beagle, level 55 Beagle does have more defense than Blitz. Um, plus she has the ability to increase her defense. So she could have done the same job probably just as well, if not better. So we didn't have much reason to use Blitz specifically other than the fact that he can stun, which is also good. This con could probably also stun. Probably also has higher defense now that I think about it. Um, whoops. Yes, Liskarm. Yeah, Liskarm has higher defense at max level. Or no. Oh yes, yeah, that was significantly higher defense. Plus she can increase defense. And she can straight up reduce stand or prevent an attack. Um... Plus, Liskarm also has the ability to give SP to nearby allies. Honestly, Liskarm probably would have solved a lot of our problems. <laughs> she would have made things a lot easier at the very least. But yeah, Liskarm, Liskarm is just straight up a really good unit. Like, I don't know that she's meta. She's not, you know, a unit who's going to snap the game over, over your, her knee. But she's definitely a unit who will make a lot of your strategies a lot more viable and make a lot of strategies that aren't viable, viable, simply due to the fact that she can increase the amount of SP that your units have, so they can use their skills more frequently. And especially in a situation like this, where we're getting attacked a lot for an extended period of time, that increased SP generation is really, really gonna be valuable. But yeah, this Karm is a unit that I sort of put aside for the fact that, again, she was a unit that I sort of relied on very heavily, and I wanted to step away from tried and true strategies to broaden my horizons. But now that I have done that, you know, there's no reason not to use a unit that I happen to like. There's no reason not to use Liskarm anymore, specifically. Um, so yeah, Liskarm would have been good. She also could have had a stun, but, uh, her... Actually, no, right. Counter Arc doesn't stun. It stuns her, is the problem. Um, it stuns Liz Farm, which was not what we would want. But yeah, I did think about Durnar for a little bit, and honestly, she probably could have done okay. But yeah, especially if she was leveled up some more, because she doesn't have that core of defense. Um, yeah, let's look at... Durnar's defense if she was, say, level 60. Um, Durnar could have been a strong choice. 458, which compared to Gummies, 400. So yeah, she would have actually been good if she was 
comparable. Um, Durnar is a unit that I wanted to use a fair amount, just in general, not specifically for this event. Um, just because I like her. <laughs> I just like her as a character. Um, yeah, very comparable defense numbers with higher attack and with, you know, arch damage on her attacks. Um, Durnar could have been pretty good, honestly. But yeah. I don't know when the use case of her versus someone else would have been really good. I guess she would have just reduced some of the tension a little bit. Made it a little bit less frightening to defend against Mateo for such a long time. Fire Whistle... I don't know that Fire Whistle... Well, again, the defense runes really played a big role in this. So Fire Whistle probably could have been fine. The fact that she can do Arch Damage is also really good. She does Arch Damage. She does Arch Damage a little bit more consistently than the Arch Defender, honestly. Which feels a little bit silly, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, Fire Whistle could have been good. Yeah, we, we did use Croissant for a good while, and honestly, we probably could have used Croissant in place of uh, Blitz, and she would have done maybe just as well, maybe even better. Um, yeah, again, we didn't use Blitz because he's Blitz, we used Blitz because he's a wall. And he did well as a wall. Gabriel did fine, of course. Um, Perfumer did fine, of course. Um, anything else to be said? Steward wasn't very exciting, but I guess three stars usually aren't. Um, yeah, Steward wasn't very exciting. We got use out of him, but we never got great use out of him. Um, he did he did good. He did help uh, preventing enemies from leaking past Asthesia to a certain extent, up until he was uh, mercilessly executed. Because of my, uh, my foolishness. But yeah, Myrtle did fine. Yeah, Myrtle having healing wings probably was to our detriment more than anything. There was never really a good point to heal anyone. So having just more DP faster probably would have been better. Someone other than Myrtle probably could have done the same job just as well, if not better. For instance, um, yeah, we should be clean on this. Um, Fon Cyrus. Fon Cyrus could have been very good. Um... Well, Cyrus wouldn't have been in easy healing range, though. So she wouldn't have had all of that better survivability. Yeah. Um, she would have, well, she would have had a lot more defense. I guess we didn't really need her. We didn't need Myrtle, like, yeah. We didn't use Myrtle to block anything if we could avoid it. We didn't need Pon Cyrus's, uh,. Yeah, we didn't need, you know, all that much out of Pon Cyrus. We could have maybe placed her on that defense room and uh, had some benefit from that. Um, yeah, ow. Pardon. Lava the Purgatory was a good pick. I don't think she really did that much better than any other, um any other splash caster would have done, mostly because I just didn't position her very intelligently because I wasn't used to playing around her limited range. There were just a few times when, the, you know, the unit that I wanted her to attack was just not in a place where she could attack them. Um, so yeah, we didn't play very well around Lava, but that's just on me. Yato did great. She distracted enemies and she applied a surprisingly large amount of damage. I don't think Blade Dance was honestly the play. I think Demon Mode would have been better. Well, hmm. I guess I was thinking that Demon Mode lasted indefinitely, but it only lasts for 20 seconds. Um, but yeah, we didn't like burst anything completely down with Yato, like I was kind of hoping that we could. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't have a opportunity to just absolutely annihilate anything with the auto. She was mostly just kind of a little bit more DPS on Mateo once he got to the end. And he was a little bit more... Uh, 
she was a little bit more... Well, I don't know. She didn't fill a role that any other... Any other rapid redeploy operator couldn't have filled. Or rather, any, uh... What, what is this branch called? Executor. But yeah, she didn't really fill a role any other executor couldn't have, I don't think. Even non-damage focused executors could have done the same thing that she did. Just as well, if not better. Um... Estesia did very well. Estesia was, was a real MVP there. And that's with Estesia being like the lowest level unit on our team. Yeah, she's tied with that for, with Gab, Gabiel, I guess, and, well, and Myrtle. But Myrtle, Myrtle's stats don't matter very much, it's her skill that we're after. At least not in this context. Um, of the units who I meant to block things and take damage and not just kind of be there for a little bit to help us in our in the beginning, Astesia did the best. And she was the lowest level again, other than Capiel. And I'm very glad that Astesia did so well, because it, it does definitely help me to help me to build that, you know, association of yeah, arts is good. Arts damage is good, and arts guards are good. Um, you know, I never thought that they were bad. I know a lot of the best units in this game are units that deal arts damage, but I I never really thought, you know, I never really thought about the arts damage itself as being a major contributing factor to that. I just thought the units themselves were good. But the fact that there are so few things that have like even as high as 50% arts resistance when there are a lot of things that can have, you know, effectively a 95% physical damage resistance. That really contributes to arts, arts damage users being pretty potent in the right situation. They aren't always an efficient choice for DP for DP. They tend to be less, or they tend to be much more expensive than comparable options. Because yeah, Astesia here, you know, costs 20 DP into vanguards, um, or into guards, a, like, yeah, a, another guard who can block one, Melantha here, granted Melantha is also a three star, but Melantha has, like, a lot more attack, she has, like, 300 more attack, she has significantly less defense, which is, I guess, part of an, kind of an issue, but yes, she has a lot more health, she attacks faster, um, you know, she has a lot going for her, and she's a lot cheaper. And let's see if I can find another... Yeah, here we go. Here's another... Here's a Dreadnought, who's the most directly comparable class. I guess Patoi Maru is another kind of exception, given that she has, uh... Patoi Maru is also kind of an exception, because she is... has a unusually low defense. And... Franca isn't promoted to the same level as Astesia is, so again, she's not directly comparable either, but I think, you know, the 25 level difference probably wouldn't give her that much more uh, defense. So yeah, I guess Arch Defenders or Arch Guards do have more defense than Dreadnoughts do on average, even if they have less health. But again, Dreadnoughts have a lot more, or Dreadnoughts generally attack faster. They have, uh, actually, hold on. Oh, I guess, hmm, Melantha attacks faster than the average Dreadnought. Interesting. Anyway. But yeah, so, in addition, like, for the same cost as Astesia, we could also get, say, Savage, who could, uh, you know, not only attack, she has a bit less attack, but she's also lower level. But yeah, she has comparable HP, in fact more HP at a lower level. She can block more units and she can attack multiple units at a time, things like that. So, you know, Arch damage is more costly. Arch damage dealing units are more costly than physical damage dealing units of the, you know, same general class. So, you know, Centurion here. I guess part of the, part of it is also that Asthesia is a, well no, they're the same rarity. But yeah. Anyway, so, fairly comparable in a lot of ways, but, yeah, Savage can do more damage in a vacuum against an enemy that 
you know, against an enemy that doesn't have, uh, or, well, let me put it this way. Savage can attack, you know, two enemies at a time. Astasia can only attack one unless her skill is active. But yeah, Savage, uh, can use her sort of skills for, like, burst damage a little bit more often, things like that. I don't know. I'd need to, like, crunch more numbers if I wanted to do, like, a real comparison. But all of this is to say that, you know, casters tend to be more expensive than snipers. You know, each, like, a core caster is more expensive than a, a marksman sniper, which are both sort of the, in my mind, the sort of default for the class. Yeah, a, a core caster is more expensive than a, than a than a marksman sniper, all else being equal, so on and so forth for like splash casters and artillerymen snipers and all that. So again, I tend to prefer strategies that come together fast and don't have to change very much. So that's why I've favored, you know, playing with snipers and defenders and stuff like that in the past. And, you know, certainly before I sort of started the, the playthrough and expanded my horizons very intentionally. So yeah, so I, anyway, all of this is to say again that I've just been sleeping on snipers and I've been sleeping on arts guards and I've been sleeping on every source of arts damage because I didn't realize that arts damage had such a, such a like lower or such a such a higher floor of damage due to you know the way the various damage reductions work anyway so we have completed the event to my satisfaction we've got like one event or one level that hasn't been restarred but you know i don't care <laughs> we've got the challenge stages but i don't care what we don't have however is crst3 the final the final operation, the final story of this event. And we're going to read through that here in a second. Before that, I am going to uh, step away for just a moment. Yes, we will be right back. We have returned. I have returned. So, one other very important thing that I just remembered. We now have enough to afford all of the outfits. Yes, a new outfit for Ayla. Yes, let's go for the description first. Rainbow Six Collaborative Series Safe House. A set of clothes that Ayla bought at the market. Light and comfortable, it is her favorite outfit in the safe house. She particularly likes how the local hat looks on her. I suppose the description is right here, so we didn't need to read it there, but you know. Whatever. I also like how they, I also like the hat. Next. Exhibition for Doc. Yeah, I think I read the name of that. Anyway. Rainbow Six Collaborative Series Exhibition, picked by Doc based on practical requirements offering protection against wind, dust, and cold as he goes to the next place that needs him. Of that, there is never a shortage. And Mirror Maze. Rainbow Six Collaborative Series, Mirror Maze. Yana's casual outfit for her free time. She has changed into a pair of shorts, hoping that the sun here is different. Perhaps she will not need her hood. But yes, so these outfits, the Overload and Skyline, I believe were also came out during the first Originium Dust uh, event. Yeah, I don't think they're like specifically like they're, you know, since they are not for a Rainbow Six character, you know, they're available at other times than just now while the Rainbow Six event is active. So I'm not too concerned about them. But yes. Anyway, let's uh, get back to where we were. We have spent enough time appreciating fashion. Now the time has come for us to 
finish up our little story here. And yes, there are rewards to be had for clearing the extra stages, but I'm not going to do that. At least not until the rerun. And I'm sure that there will be one. <clears throat> All right, Elaria Restaurant. If I recall correctly, it's my lunch break now, so any interrogation will have to wait until... I'm not here for that. It's you. What now? Does Rhodes Island want to trample on my corpse too? By all means. I'm only here on behalf of Miss Candela to inform you of Dasol's decision on how to handle you. The Dasol's mayoral office has determined that they will not try you for your crimes. Let me guess, you're handing me over to the Coalition government? Mateo's an idiot, but he's still the Coalition's representative in the Souls. Hmm, I've toyed with him so much that the Coalition is probably itching to tear me apart. That's an accurate reading of your situation. The Coalition government wants to haul you to La Unidad for a trial, just like Mateo. A public trial? Great, I'm looking forward to it. No, Senor Reynal. You're being sent back to Casimir's. Come again? The General Chamber of Commerce is currently is pressuring Candela to send you back to Cosmere's. Come again? Your father's KGCC contacts pulled some strings and you no longer have to remain in Dos Souls. So, instead of heading to La Unidad, you can go home. No, I'm not going back. I'm not going back to that utterly despicable, depraved, and deplorable... You don't have a say here, Senor Reynel. It's your own reckless actions bringing you wherever your final destination may be. You have to swallow your medicine, be it sweet or bitter. Old oh man, you're never going to leave me alone, are you? Right, there's one more thing. You need to decide where your assets are going. You say it like I have a choice in the matter. Hasn't Candela already used all the methods at her disposal to move them elsewhere? There are some... Fixed assets that nobody dares to take. Just write any name on this transfer contract. Fine, I'll just write the name of whoever wanders by next. Good timing. Senor Diaz, uh, what are you doing here? Identifying Mateo's men, the one who were playing hostage earlier, and you. What did you call me for? Need something? N no. Adios, then. Say, you... Anyway, you haven't given a name yet, right? You can always take back what you... I never go back on my word. Besides, this isn't such a bad choice. Let a genuine art lover have it. Raynell's definitely an interesting character. I liked Raynell a lot. But yes. I like... I tend to like characters who... Who are kind of jerks a little bit, but not like... A huge, huge jerk. He has some principles. He has his own goals and his own preferences. <laughs> I don't know. There's not a... I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I like that he's amusing about the fact that he's a jerk. Mateo was mostly just amusing because of how his foolishness uh, led to him being in bad situations. I like Raynell for for his personality. Raynell really put that old firefighter's name on it. Yes, I confirmed it one last time. I was escorting Howe to the Souls, and he didn't change his mind. He really inherited none of his father's qualities. Honestly, he would probably appreciate that evaluation. Of course, but I didn't mean it as a compliment. <laughs> Lady Candela, your coffee as well as Ernesto's? Your aroma is so strong. What beans did you use for this, for this, Senor Booker? A triple dark roast blend Lady Candela has been drinking lately. Please enjoy. Any plans to catch up with old friends now that everything has died down? I wasn't intending to bother anyone before I got into the city, actually. Indeed, you wouldn't have if that whole ruckus didn't happen. 
But you know how it is in the souls. Never a quiet day for us. Yeah. Just like now, Raynell's antics have helped dealt a heavy blow to the coalition government's influence. La Unidad has been issuing orders of letters of protest, but they can only dream of getting Raynell and his assets. The Souls is not at their beck and call. The other two factions are also itching to get their hands on him. Oh, look at me. I seem to have slipped into a meaningless ramble. Relatable. No, no. This is not at all. This is very important information. All right, Ernesto. Have a taste and see if this blend is to your liking. It's so strong, but the texture is fantastic. Do elaborate. I can discern each bean species and aroma, but I can't tell which bean has the biggest ratio in the blend. All three aromas are fighting to come out on top, but soon they all converge into a strong, unified, caramelized flavor. Precisely. The main selling point of this blend is that the blend ratio isn't set in stone, but you still get that caramel flavor as long as their proportions are roughly balanced. I see. So, does it suit your taste? I... Still can't decide? It's alright, the shop is just over there. You can always try a second cup as long as you come back. They'll even modify the blend to your ideal ratio, or you can ask them to brew you a cup with sparkling water. <laughs> You're joking. A joke? I wouldn't say so. Because I really am looking forward to seeing what you choose, Ernesto. I feel like that's a metaphor for something. Because I know tequila has a connections with the souls. We've seen that, you know, pretty evidently throughout this event. I believe they mentioned it before, but I don't remember what his exact relation was to this person. Or, well, I don't remember what this person's exact relation was to Dust Souls, but I know that he's... or that, uh, Ernesto. I guess that's his name. Tequila is, like, the son of someone who is important. Or perhaps was important. I don't remember precisely. Yo, Ernesto, your chat with Mayor Candela took forever. I had no choice. We go way back and we have too many things to talk about. He must still like you if you guys talk for that long. I guess so. Hmm. Always clamping up so fast whenever it's time to talk about you. Fine. Since you're so unwilling to talk, I don't have to ask you. <laughs> Raffaella won't tell you even if you ask. How did you know I was going to ask her? Do you have mind reading arts or something? It's written all over your face. Ooh, scary man we have here. By the way, I already knew this morning we would be late, and I appreciate that you've been waiting for me this whole time, but we've already missed our appointment with Diaz, you know? Uh-oh. Well then, Mr. Raynell Kowalski, please get in the car while I fetch your luggage. Raynell sits in the back with a blank expression. The door shuts and it feels slightly warm, so he takes off his coat and leans back as he begins to loosen his collar. A strange noise outside the car interrupts him, and he turns to look out the window. The General Chamber of Commerce employee lies on the ground, unconscious. He then hears a tapping noise from the opposite window and follows the sound to see a familiar face standing outside the car. Raynell rolls down the window and sees a pair of dark eyes. Mind giving me a ride, sir? And where are you wanting to go? Hasn't that always been up to you to decide? You've been following me for a while, so maybe this time you take the lead and decide our destination. You really have nowhere you want to go, Milos? It'll be the same as before, no matter where we go, yes? Things are different this time. I'm broke, aside from the two suitcases in the trunk. Then I'll drive until our fuel runs out, and we'll go wherever the car takes us. Well, fine. You're the one in charge now. Milo smiles at Raynell and gets into the driver's seat, looking at the other face through the rearview window before starting the engine. There's a blend of confusion, delight, and a slight hint of hesitation on Raynell's face. You seem like you have something to ask me. Why did you come back? Why didn't you leave? Don't you already know the answer? 
Maybe my question was con to confirm that answer. Don't be so sure. My patience might run out on you, and you'll find I leave pretty soon. What? Not today. No, not today. Milos looks away from the mirror, starts the engine, and the silver car sets off. Galleria Cristalwa's exhibition hall is still the same as it was the other day. Shattered glass cases, scorched ground, cracks in the walls, colorful sp spotlights, wanton graffiti, and frantic music going wild. Everything is the same, except for the additional presence of a big round table in the center of the room. A grill sizzles on the table of the perfect temperature, emanating an enticing aroma. Well, why isn't anyone ordering? Not hungry? I didn't expect you to turn the place into a barbecue restaurant. Huh. The building got bombed into a war zone and the art can't stay here anymore. So, I thought we might as well turn it into a side gig instead of leaving it empty. The TV stations and the souls lost their moneymaker right now, so now they've started sticking their noses here and spreading rumors that none of our artists can cook and just survive on dried cactus. So, I have to show them what true Bolivarian cuisine is. And I'll have one of those onion and mushroom meat skewers. Make it too. Coming right up. Uh, Diaz is really good at this. I have to be honest, we've traveled all over Terra, but this is the first time we've tasted Bolivarian BBQ. Where have you all been? We started from the Sargonian Desert, and after a brief stay on Rhodes Island, where we got our Team Rainbow moniker, we each went off to a few more places. The rainforests of Sargon, the ice fields of Sami, Colombia's mines and cities, villages in the Ursus Taiga. Even so, we've only ever set foot on a small piece of these lands. My only regret is burying Levi Klitschko under the sands of Sargon along with his mad lab. If you're homesick, you'll have to start thinking of a way, different way to go back. Have you found one? Not even a lead. I guess you wouldn't mind a few more traveling companions on your quest? <laughs> the more the merrier. Uh, Lord, what is that? Everyone, let me on behalf of Lord introduce this Ursa specialty beverage. Uh-oh. There's a sudden noise outside the window. The members of Team Rainbow turns their, turn their heads full of food and drink towards the source of the noise, wondering what kind of trouble has erupted this time. And then, the first one to realize what is going on shrugs in resignation. Papa says it's our turn to dance our Volpo minuet today, so turn off your classical music. A techno says she likes our triple meter waltz. Go and ask her if you don't believe me. She's over by the wall. Yeah, exactly. Come over here, techno. What do you make of this? Hmm. Don't bother me with this kind of stuff. If you can spare the time to argue over what music to play, then maybe take a look at my work. Your work? But your hand. Oh, just come over and you'll see. Oh, wow. You drew this yourself? Haha. <laughs> I practice a lot, and I'm finally used to drawing with my left hand. Forget about the doodles and get your butt inside, Techno. You have to try this Ursa specialty beverage before they down the last drop of it. Truly really something else. Alright. And with that... We are done. I could keep going. And I could do this mission. And I guess I might as well, honestly, just for posterity, why not? A victory lap again, like the one we had last time. But this time, we are definitely going with all of Team Rainbow. No doubt about it. Alright. I don't think that's going to be optimal, necessarily, but, you know, I don't think we care that much. But yes. Like I said, I've already expressed the thoughts that I had about this this uh, event, I suppose. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. 
And it's a shame that I, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a shame that we had to kind of rush it a little bit. We didn't, we weren't in too much of a hurry. We got things done pretty comfortably before the deadline, I suppose. Comfortably enough that we we're not, you know, we weren't exactly scrambling to the finish. But yes, would have been nice if we, yeah, I don't know. Would have been nice if I could really take this at my own pace, though. That's usually my preference. You know that pretty well, I think, at this point. Um, let's see. I think, yeah, Frost is a, is a specialist. All right. Get our usual medics. Um, we do have a defender. We've got two guards, another specialist. We've got, like, three specialists. Um, no arts damage, so we should do something about that. Um, and no EP generation, so we should also do something about that. Um, Myrtle's been with us this whole time, and we've appreciated her company. And as for a caster, I guess we probably don't need one that desperately for this early mission. But let's go with... One of the casters who really, really saved us there. Lava, the Purgatory. At least make the challenge. So, one last ride until, you know, the next event that's coming up tomorrow. <laughs> Do be careful, everyone. I'm here Do to be help. careful indeed. So... We've got a very range-heavy build here, which is something. I'm not sure it's anything good, but it's certainly something. Let's go with Fuse. I don't remember what we're going to be seeing in this level. We're kind of, we're kind of rediscovering it right now. Kind of rediscovering what uh, Team Rainbow does, honestly. Um, Gaviel can cover a lot of ground with her healing. Hmm. But she can't cover infinite ground. If she can't. Treatment, you gotta hmm, okay. Well, let's. Yeah, I'm being foolish. Um, Doc. Get going, quickly. Thank you. Okay. Because, yeah, I was wanting to wait and put, uh, on, until we could put, say, Pachanka or something in front of him. But, you know, sometimes oh you do have to bow to practicality. Don't get yourself killed, dummy. Hmm? I have to get serious now. All right. Cross. And... I guess we could put Blitz somewhere, but I don't know where would be a good place to put him. Let's get Nowhere, I guess, but we can still place him somewhere. Maybe in place of Myrtle. Because again, we gotta have Team Rainbow. Focus on the death with me. Yes. We don't have a lot of arch damage down here, so that's kind of a problem. But it's not too desperate of a problem. I suppose I should start, like, putting down bear traps. Or, sorry, welcome mats. Welcome mats. These are not your average everyday traps. No, no, no. There's a limit to how many of these I can have at a time, I think, isn't there? Oh, also, we need, uh, we don't have Ayla. Oh, we, hmm, okay. No time to hesitate. If anybody well. needs to sneeze, do it setting up. All right, I can't no not have Ayla hesitate. after I made all that fuss about this being, you know, our victory lap. Hang in there, I'm coming. Hmm. Yeah, I've done some less than ideal positioning here, but that's fine. Come on, get it together. Laying out the welcome mat. Oh man. That's a bad place to put a welcome mat, actually, now that I think about it. 
Yeah, that stops an enemy where we can't do anything about them. Alright. Let's do some stunning. I like stunning. Well, maybe I don't like stunning that much, apparently. Um, Alright, we did lose Ash, but that was a little bit expected. Ah, right, we can't use that skill because, uh, I guess, well, no, I was going to say maybe it would have been better to put Tachanka on the bottom, but again, we already established, you know, all that information about, uh, you know, enemies and defense and all that. Yes. All very well and good. Doc isn't doing a whole lot here, but... Oh, Iana! Oh, I guess, yeah, we don't have enough, uh... I guess we don't have enough people to, uh, use all of My Team Rainbow at once, do we? Hmm. Oh well. Again, I'm not too fussed. Don't get yourself killed, we got to dummy. use everyone in this mission, and we got to clear up the last dangling loose end. A so I'm pretty pleased. And Doc just sort of gets to sit there and hang out. I guess we don't need much healing at this point, I don't think. Well, maybe we need more healing than I thought. Maybe this was a bad choice. Yeah, um... My thought was I wanted to finish the mission with all of Team Rainbow on the field, but it uh, looks like that's not happening. Oh well. Yes. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your contributions, Fuse. I guess maybe if I had stunned... Well, I mean, if I just waited a little bit longer, let Gabiel do some more healing. Oh well. Let's... There we go. Uh, we didn't use... Uh, we didn't use Tachanka's skill there. Oh well. We've seen Tachanka before, I suppose. There we go. No more than usual. Very good. Now we're done. Spicy Cristal. Uh. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose it did end up pretty spicy. Okay, so. Good event. Fun times. Yes. So, thank you for joining me tonight. Once again, I will open the floor. If anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, um... Hmm. Ah, yes, okay, yeah. Anyway, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a target on my own. One way or the other, though. Let's go over the business. So. My hubris is immeasurable and my work is never done. So, we will be continuing Arc Nights at an increased rate tomorrow. Yes, the, yeah, we will be continuing the Operation Originium Dust, or we'll be beginning Operation Originium Dust. I guess technically it will be continuing because I have, uh, I have started uh, Originium Dust before, played enough to get Tachanka, grinded some stages to get more Tachanka, all of that. So yes, so we will see how the first half of Operation or Team Rainbow reached the yeah the first part of Team Rainbow reached the reached there. How the first half of Team Rainbow reached Terra and all of that. We'll get a little bit of context for some of the things that we have seen. We'll have a good amount of fun, I'm sure. But yes. So, beyond that, Arc Nights tomorrow, Friday, is should be collab day. Again, we will see how things shake out on the day of. We will most likely be continuing Coffee Talk, and if not doing that, we will be starting our next game project, Chevy Sheps and I. I suppose I've said collab a lot recently, but I've not said who I'm collabing with. It's the same person every time. Um, anyway. So yes. 
tip. So yes, so the collab should continue Friday. If not, honestly, if not, I think I'm just going to take a, a break. <laughs> because I do want a little bit of a break. Because, yeah, we shouldn't... I should be able to more consistently play uh, Operation Originium Dust. Part of the reason why we have the long gap in between the first and second uh, streams of this this uh, event is due to the fact that I, uh, you know, due to my arm injury. Yes, due to the damage to my mechanical arm here. Yeah. So I'm probably not going to be in a situation where I'm likely, though it's certainly not impossible, but I'm probably not going to be in a situation where I'm likely to suffer another such injury again. Here's hoping. So it seems unlikely that we're going to have any more we're going to have any unanticipated delays. So taking a day off should be fine. Yes, so again, if it's a collab, it's a collab, and if it's not, it's not. And then Saturday, if if I do the collab Saturday, or if I do the collab Friday, I might take Saturday off. And if I Yeah, if I If I take Friday off, I will not take Saturday off. That's yeah. Anyway, so. Thursday and Friday streams, should they happen, 9 p.m. Central Time or so, usually closer to 9.30, but I'll, you know, I could make it as early as 9, I think. I'll try to do that. Yes, 9, 9 p.m. Central Time is what we'll aim for. And then the Saturday stream, should it happen, will be 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Yes, next week, we should be seeing some more Arc Knights some more, uh, or some Operation Originium Dust. Probably I will be playing most weeks. But yeah, I don't anticipate having to anything delay me on Monday, but we should have a... shouldn't have to be late Monday like we were earlier this week. But yes. Again, we'll sort of play it by ear. I think we should be able to get through Originium Dust well, I don't know. I was going to say we should be able to get through it with less trouble, but that we don't really have any reason to believe that would be true at this point. Because, yes, I don't remember it very well. I don't remember it well enough to, like, say anything about it. But, again, I don't anticipate uh, causing any damage to my physical body or any af of my aftermarket parts. So, I shouldn't have a reason to be, you know having to take time off. So yes. So, all of that being said, I'm not seeing any raid suggestions. So, I think tonight we're going to go and visit Asachibi. Ba -ba -ba -bum. So yes, Asachibi VT. Yes, yes. So yes, she is playing some Sudokats, which, based on the look of it, seems to be a game Full stop. Um, anyway, seems to be a seems to be Sudoku, but instead of numbers, you put cats in. But yeah. But yeah, not not a Sudoku whiz myself. I've never really intuitively grasped it, but I've also not played it very much. I do like puzzles, so it could be the sort of thing I could be into. Anyway, so. That's neither here nor there, because I'm not streaming the game, so. Thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much. The customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. And, yeah, okay, I messed up my outro there, but anyway, have a nice night. Farewell. <laughs>